validation for the Hortons. And ironically, the brothers aren't even there to see it. They're busy working round the clock on their design for the America bomber. In January 1945, Walter Horton returned to Berlin to brief Hermann Goering on the brothers' design for a lethal long-range bomber, the Horton 18. Walter shows Goering the concept, a bigger version of the 229. 142-foot wingspan, six jet engines. Goering is stunned. In their conversations, Goering was very clear to Walter that he needed this new aircraft because by 1946, Germany would have a functioning nuclear weapon. With the Horton brothers' attention focused on their flying wing bomber, test flights of the 229 jet fighter continued. Over the following months, Ziller flew the Horton 229 numerous times, and it performed way beyond the Horton's expectations. In fact, Ziller even flew it in a dogfight against the Messerschmitt ME-262, and it outperformed them in dogfighting abilities, maneuverability, and speed. While the flying wing used the same jet engines as the ME-262, its new propulsion system proved to be fatally unreliable. A test flight in February 1945 would be star pilot Erwin Ziller's last. When the 229's right engine flamed out, he was unable to regain control. His crippled fighter plummeted into the German countryside with the pilot still inside. Exactly two months after his historic maiden flight in the 229, Erwin Ziller was dead. More than 64 years on, another Horton 229 is ready to take to the skies. An exact replica of the Nazi original. Although it won't fly, it will make it above the ground for state-of-the-art radar testing to see if the Nazis really did invent stealth technology generations ahead of their time. All right, so here it is. It's done. I tell you, you guys got to be proud of yourselves, what you've done. I mean, yeah. this thing looks absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you. We're really proud of it. The designers of the world's first operational stealth bomber, the B-2, are also anxious to see where the Nazi designers might have beaten them to it decades before. You did a great job. It's, I tell you what, uh, there's nobody better in this business than you guys. After working 28 years in the dark, it's nice to spend one day in the light, you know? You know, most of what we do in here over the years never sees the light of day, you know, but it's, it's nice to let people see what goes on. You don't get the opportunity to work on something like this um, with history behind it, and that's what made it a little bit special. It, uh, the other thing is that um, there, it, it's got my heart and soul in it. <laughs> There's a lot of me in there. Um, I can't wait to see it up on the pole. I want to see what it what it can really do. I want to see if it's if it's stealthy. It looks stealthy. It certainly looks stealthy. Finally, now we'll get some real answers, yeah. some real yeah. data that will tell us, you know, how stealthy it really was. So that's awesome. Northrop Grumman's radar test range is hidden away in a remote part of the Mojave Desert. Since the late 1970s, it's been used to measure the stealth capabilities of a huge range of new aircraft designs, many of which are still unseen and remain top secret. Naturally, the stealth test range is usually strictly off limits to visitors, but just this once, cameras have been allowed inside for the first time. These uh, surfaces that we've been working on are going to taste uh, electromagnetic radiation pretty soon. This is the first time uh, radars going to be shot at this aircraft ever. Okay, stop. And I'm on to the pistol. This is it. This is the day we've been waiting for. Great weather. Can't beat this. I've moved a lot of stuff, but never moved a German stealth fighter before. Yeah, we're good. 
As the Model 229 doesn't have real jet engines, a hoist is used to launch it up to the five-story high radar testing platform. I'm just at a loss for words. This looks so cool. It just changes the whole perspective to see it that far away and up in the air. Like all potentially stealthy designs, the test range crews have to take great care not to damage the model. Any nicks or scrapes will spoil the accuracy of the radar results. It's great up there. Oh, it does. As far as stealth characteristics and everything, we always, as an American, I feel like that's our deal, you know. We're, we're doing the stealth stuff. Never had any idea that, uh, that the Germans were doing a wing back, back in the 40s. It looks great. It really does. Time for the moment of truth. Six decades after the Horton fighter's first flight, the true extent of its stealth capability is about to be tested at last. Deep inside a secure control room in a remote Californian desert, the company behind the modern stealth bomber is about to do something the Nazis never did. Hey guys. Test the stealth of the radically advanced World War II German Horton flying wing. An exact replica will be hit by radar signals from every angle to find out if its original German designers were really trying to slip through Allied radar. We're doing pretty much level and nose on the first set of spins. Each rotation does a frequency band. We're doing VHF, UHF and L band. This wide range of frequencies will give the test team a better idea of the fighter's radar cross section. So we want to make sure that we get enough of that data in order to characterize in each one of those systems how the vehicle performs. Okay, we're starting our next spin now. At this frequency, you can tend to see a lot more of the characteristics of the, of the inlets and the, and the canopy area up in the front of the vehicle. The inlets specifically, you know, where energy is going down and hitting the front of the engine frames is, is showing up and the bow frame in the canopy and just energy that's getting into the cockpit area and rattling around itself. The test is designed to see if the Nazi fighter could have penetrated the Second World War era radar array along the British coast known as the chain home system. And I'll be really uh, fascinated to see how after we process the data and get some numbers what the, what the performance of this aircraft really would have been like against the chain home radar system. Yeah, we have to do a lot of post-processing in order to get the actual numbers that we can use for comparison against the uh, fighters and bombers of the day. We're ready to go. A simulated raid on wartime Britain will be conducted with real-time accuracy inside this advanced air combat facility. Normally used to test high-tech 21st century aerospace innovations, the clock is about to be wound back to 1944. All systems that we configured and we have been running. Veteran test pilot Paul T.P. Smith will be at the controls of the virtual Horton 229, a vast change from his usual test flights, including America's latest stealth fighter, the F-35. Roger, I've got altitude 20,000 feet, 600 knots. T.P. will make his virtual attack from a range of altitudes. His target, a chain home radar station. In the Battle of Britain, chain home radar system, the low system, had a range of about 100 to 110 miles, which could see across the channel and into France. They could see the German fighters marshalling before they ever crossed the channel. To help reduce their detection range, German aircraft began flying across the English Channel at altitudes as low as 50 feet. But by early 1945, Allied aircraft ruled the skies at any altitude. By mid-April, the ground forces were also closing in. American troops were marching on the Special, or Sonderkommando 9, Experimental Aviation Unit. Although a second 229 fighter was almost complete, the Horton brothers fled, forced to abandon their dream of arming the Luftwaffe 
with jet-wing fighters and long-range bombers. 63 years after the only surviving Horton 229 was captured and shipped back to the United States, the Batwing fighter is about to reveal its secrets. Is that the canopy there in the center that's lighting up, or is that uh, just a uh, blending from the inlets? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably a combination of both. Um, again, when you get down to these type of wavelengths, a lot of the scattering elements tend to blend together. So you can see that the nose, the inlets, that canopy area, is, that's where a major part of the uh, radar reflection is coming from. It looks like with all the data that uh, this aircraft would have made a major, major difference. All about about a 20% reduction in the actual uh, detection range. Once detected by radar, a conventional fighter of the time took around 19 minutes to reach the target. But with its superior stealth and speed, the Horton 229 could cover the same distance in less than eight minutes. While the Horton's advantage in detection range is on the order of 20%, the combination of speed and stealth was absolutely lethal. But even if you did detect it, it was so fast, it would have been extremely difficult for any of the Allied fighters at the time to have been able to catch it. You can imagine the, uh, the amount of improvement that the Horton 229 could have given to the German warfighter. I, I surely wouldn't want to bend the Allied forces. Had the 229 adopted the low-level tactics employed by the Luftwaffe, the results could have been devastating. And when you're flying at 50 feet, traveling at around 600 miles an hour, plus the reduction in the detection range, now you've got only two and a half minutes of reaction time for the Allies to, to know you were coming. Looking at it, your response time then with low altitude, uh, when you only have 24 miles, that's two and a half minutes, um, you just don't have the time to respond. You could keep them from seeing you and getting their defensive systems up, you create such an element of surprise. You can now basically roam at will and attack the targets that you want to. The Horton 229 aircraft design predates modern stealth technology by more than three decades. If the Germans had deployed it in great numbers, uh, it would have been a game changer. After decades of speculation and debate, State-of-the-art testing has proven the effectiveness of Nazi Germany's stealth fighter. But the 229 wasn't the Horton brothers' only design terrifyingly ahead of its time. Had the ingenious Nazis completed their long-range bomber, the world may have been a very different place. The characteristics and things that we, had, we saw on the Horton 229 would translate directly to the Horton 18, which was the larger version of the Horton 229. Goring was very clear that by 1946, they would have a nuclear bomb, and the Horton 18 would be used to deliver that bomb on an American city like New York or Washington. Even if you managed to detect uh, a Horton 18 bomber approaching the east coast of the United States, you probably would have only had about eight minutes of warning time, which would have been totally inadequate to mount any kind of defense against it. While the stealth flying wing made a lethal fighter, its use as a long-range bomber would have been catastrophic. It's a terrifying thought in a lot of ways because if the Third Reich was able to use them operationally before the Allies understood they were there, those first few strikes with those airplanes could have been devastating. <laughs> 